Hi, my name is Brian Halley, and I am the founder and director of RightThink, and I am an outlier. Welcome to Outlier On Air with Ever Gonzalez, the show where we interview the founders, disruptors, and mavens of the world. Learn how grit, failure, and success are all a part of the entrepreneurial journey. Hey everybody, welcome to Outlier On Air, the podcast where we interview founders, disruptors, and mavens. As always, I'm your host, Ever Gonzalez. On today's episode, we have Brian Halley. He is the founder and director of Right Think. Brian, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. Thanks, Ever. And we're excited to have you. We've worked together a little bit uh, the last few months, and and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So. You know, having you on the show is, is just kind of a, a perk for us. So, so again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. So I, I kind of want to get into uh, what you're doing now with, with Right Think and, uh, you know, talk about all the different uh, things that you're involved with. I know that you're, you're a busy guy. Uh, you know, I think we've known each other for a little less than a year, but uh, you're involved in a lot of cool stuff. And so before we really get into that, tell me where you're calling us from. 
I am calling you from Payson, Utah. We what's, have a remote office here, and we work with everybody all around the country. Yeah, what what what's the vibe there in your neck of the woods there in northern Utah, right? I, I know, like you mentioned, you do work all over the, the U.S., but uh, um, what's the entrepreneurial community there uh, in northern Utah? Yeah, great question, great question. In fact, I am 20 minutes from Provo, Utah, which is one of the hubs of most of the startup companies in the country. A lot of big startups coming, a lot of ideas are coming there. And I actually spoke there at the startup building on Wednesday. So the vibe is there's they're being trained on good business, how to do it, how to validate their business models. And, and there's a lot of young entrepreneurs coming out of the schools as well as businesses. And it's happening. It's, it's hopping over here. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things coming out of uh, Northern Utah. A lot of great companies, like you said, a lot of uh, uh, um, highly skilled entrepreneurs, and uh, you know, Utah is making some noise in general. And so we're, I'm, I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad that we're, uh, you know, connecting with people like you, uh, not just in Utah but throughout the U.S. So uh, it, this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, for for those that are listening, right, um, let's get right into it. Right, think. What is it? How does it work? Um, how can we get involved? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. So I've been doing design for uh, about 20 years now. I've worked with some big companies like Reebok, Jelly Belly Candy Company. Uh, we did Warner Brothers, worked a little bit on Harry Potter movies. And so I share that with you, not to brag, but to say that I'm a graphic designer by trade. I went to school for it. Um, and then my first job, I landed in a company that had nine different brands. It had Reebok and Health Rider, Proform, nine different companies. So I knew how to design well, but I didn't know what branding was. Mm -hmm. And I had a mentor there teach me about branding. So at a young age. So I started with these big companies going through these professional branding processes with big agencies, understanding what a brand is. And branding is not your logo or your design. It's something bigger than that. So I've really been fascinated by it. And so I've had a few design agencies, and those have been great, but I realized that without branding, we just become part of the problem. We want to be up at the front end of understanding companies. So RightThink was created um, a year ago with a whole new business model to come in and give a world-class brand, that knowledge, that education to the startup businesses and the small businesses. And if we could do it right and pinpoint it, laser focus, we could bring it down to a price point that they can approach that's approachable instead of paying, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars that the big companies do. Can I bring it down to smaller companies so they can get that world-class branding at the beginning? You know, it's funny. I know I, I was uh, uh, um, doing this and, and because we talked to a lot of different entrepreneurs, I know that uh, some of them uh, do this as well, where we, we confuse, just like you mentioned, branding with just our logo and our website and, and, just all these different things. And we kind of confuse, you know, even branding and marketing and all these things, the, these terms and these different things. We just think it's all one big thing. But but there's a, a little bit of a science and, and an art to trying to figure out y your identity, your branding, all that good stuff, right? W what are some of the mistakes yeah. that the entrepreneurs make early on? Okay. Um, I, I think the best entrepreneurs when they start are the ones that know that they don't know everything. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's really smart. I, I've learned to put my ego to the side. But what we don't understand is as we go along the sea of like we want to open a business and what our visual eyes sense and see without the education is that when we go along, if you picture an ocean and you're in your boat and you look out and you see all these ice caps and those ice caps are businesses. And what do you see in businesses? Well, you see their logo. You see their social media. You see their websites you see the touch points that are touching you so when you start a, a company most business owners just go straight to that i have a company i need a brand and they think brand is a logo and they say i need to get a website and they go through that process so that's what most business owners just jump to well branding is the iceberg that's underneath that's really what's driving what you're seeing up at the top and so here at right think we follow the three phases of branding and that's the first one is the messaging phase and that's where we we talk about four pillars of purpose position promise and personality so much inside there we might talk about it a little later but 
you get those four things down, then you move to the second phase, which is your identity phase, where you create the logo mark or the symbol that's going to represent the purpose, position, promise, and personality. And then after you get that image, which is so important, the face, then you move to the third phase, which is the expression phase. And that's your websites. That's your social media. That's how you get your marketing campaigns. And what I see business owners do most of the time is they skip that first messaging phase. So all of a sudden they're down at the end in this expression phase trying to figure out their, their what do I do this marketing campaign on? How do I sell? What Are we sexy? Are we a lover? Are we, um, are we funny? What do we do? And they have, they're bogged down with thousands upon thousands of decisions in the expression phase when if they would have just focused up on the messaging phase, that becomes their compass to make those decisions later. You know, that's, that's what I see a lot. And so how, you know, I know with Outlier, it, it took us really like a year and a half to figure out what, who we were, what we, what we really truly wanted to do, what we were all about. I mean, I, you know, we were uh, outliers. We didn't want to be the norm, all, all that good stuff, right? We wanted to do things our own way. So we kind of had some of these thoughts and ideas, but I feel like it took us a, a little while to, to stumble upon who we really were. Um, is that common or, or do people come in to you saying, this is who I am, this is what I want, I just need help getting there? Or it, it sounds like it's it's a process, right? I mean, it's not just an overnight kind of kind of a thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it is a process. There are companies that come in that have been in business a while and they know who they are. Those are the ones that can go through this system. Even the ones that know who they are and they kind of know their brand, we take them through this professional brand process to give them at the end a official brand brief. This is the document that governs all the decisions that you'll make in the direction of your company. And uh, that's what we have most of the time is we have people come through that process and we know how to find out their direction their 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 questions of their purpose we drive into more of the position of their company their target markets what their product is um, what are they delivering on all the time in their promise and through the process of going uh, asking them that they have crazy breakthroughs now we're not breakthrough coaches or anything like that but what they find out about their business Sometimes it's at the end. They might say, well, I'm a caregiver. I love to help people and do this. And then through the process, we find out they're not a caregiver. They're not like helping that. They're a visionary. That's the personality type that they are. And uh, yeah, a lot of breakthroughs happen. So good question. Do they know it? Most of the time they don't. They might have an idea of it. But after they go through us, it's like this nice filtering process where we can direct them. And they don't need to know it perfectly. They just have to be faced north, going in that direction. <laughs> well, let's let's use the the example that you just kind of brought up with with a, a client, maybe thinking that they're the caregivers, right? And and after this process, you find out that they're more the the what the visionary. So, do you go in there and say, no, 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 let let's change this up because you're more of a visionary. And if you do that, when you do that, do you get pushback from from you know from from your client? I love it. I love it. This is good. So I got to start with a, a, a little caveat is I've lost my ego in this ever. <laughs> I've got, I might've had an ego back in the day fighting over Mac versus PC. Uh-huh. Uh, designers know everything at this point. It's all about relationships and ca- uh, collaborating with a client. So <laughs> we go through these process and we're ever learning as well. We're always learning. Um, but yeah, clients come through And they might, because we are listeners and we are asking these questions and guiding them, we do become counselors and consultants in the process. So we, we did recently have a client that just came through and she, she said she was a caregiver, the exact same. And so she said, okay, I got to probably do a background, but what we're trying to do in this process is find the purpose, position and promise. But one of the biggest things we do is we lock on to one of the 12 personality archetypes from Carl Jung. Those are the things that exist in our minds that they have heroes and there's there's the magician and there's the ruler and there's innocence, but they're the things that exist in all of literature, all of movies, and 
all of, uh, yeah, just you see it everywhere. And so these archetypes guide us in creating brands. So when someone comes through and they choose caregiver, we here at RightThink have laid out images of what each of those look like. We know the color palettes, the typography. We know the photography style. Um, we know the words that are associated with it. And that guides you in a direction to help people become loyal to you. So here we are in this in the situation of we find these, these questions out with this client and we thought she was a caregiver. And so we go down this caregiver route and we, we, present the, we present the brand brief, we present the logos, we come back with the logos and she hates all of them. Oh, nice. It's not what she expected. Uh -huh. She wanted to be more fun. She wanted to do this. She wanted to go out there. And we said, okay, well, up at the front end, what's guiding us is the needle saying to move this direction. And when we're going that direction, you're saying that's not it. So let's go back. Instead of like trying to come up with like more logos, more designs, trying to get in that direction, which we did. We came up with like 12. We ended up doing 12 different logos for her. None of them were correct. So we know as an agency, let's go back up at the front end and find out what was going on here. And so we go to the front we realized we didn't have the visual representation at that point to show the client where it would lead. So we implemented that now, but back then we didn't. And so here we are going through this caregiver, find out she's a visionary and the visionary style and all those photography, the photography that went with it, the styles, everything now matched the direction she wanted to go and was intending to go. So we did it, nailed it. And it's happier. So we learn from the, pro the process as well as, yeah, going through a, a challenge that really didn't work out the first time. <laughs> so what's the, what, what's the process? How, how long does it usually take per, per client? I mean, I'm assuming everybody is a little bit different, but on average, I come to you and say, we need some help. Let's work on this. Um, how long before we, we kind of have stuff uh, squared away? Yeah, yeah, great question. Uh, a lot of people ask that because some people are under deadlines. They don't go into it. Now, you go to a big agency, obviously, you're going to get great teams doing huge work. But we know most small businesses don't need that massive market research and surveys, and they, they don't have time to spend months and months on it. So we fine-tune it um, to, uh, we call it brand strategist calls. We get, you get one-on-one -on -one conversations with a brand strategist, and we do them over the phone, and we just walk through. We ask questions. We find things out. There's a little bit of homework on the – when we talk about the avatars, which is like the target market. Mm -hmm. Avatars are a little more specific, like who's that exact person, not just the market, but who's that person? What do they look like? What do they feel? What do they do? They have to do homework on their side of knowing who that person is. That's probably the only homework they have. So after a two-hour call, we are – we. We get the copywriting. We get the brand brief all written up. They approve it. We have to fine tune it. We show them the, this is what the archetype we think you are. Does this sound right? This is what it looks like. This is the expression of it. Does it still sound right? That process, we tell clients if it's a rush, we can get them through with four to six weeks. But normally, we probably have clients about eight weeks okay. through that process. Yeah. Um, so how, how big is your team right now? And how many clients can you work on at uh, at one given time? Yeah, yeah, great question. We're we're growing. We're growing fast. We're realizing this knowledge and education is not out there. So I'm speaking to a lot of small businesses and uh, expos, entrepreneurs. We have two designers that are expert in branding and being able to communicate those images after we have the uh, the the brand brief. We have two brand strategists who work with clients to do that. We have um, two web designers. So if anybody wants to go web, we added web just because of popular demand. We're like, okay, you've done our brand. Can you do our web? And we're like, you know what? We really can. Let's do it. And then we have a couple office managers, some admin. We have a sales team that do it. So we're about a, a group of 10. Probably right now we're about 10. That's a good, little, that's a good group. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> With um, you know, with with what you're doing, we we've had a lot of, um, I don't know, we have like three, almost 400 interviews, right, that we've done on, on the podcast, and obviously we have some marketers, some some um, branding uh, companies, and, and different things like that. 
Um, and, and it's funny because when I when we're talking to these entrepreneurs, they are great at what they do, obviously, and they help a lot of clients and um, help them with their branding, their logo, their web, whatever it is. And then when we start talking about their their own personal company, the, their branding, their marketing, their they they don't um, pay much attention to it, right? They they're so focused on their client that their stuff they don't a lot of them don't even have websites, don't have uh, marketing campaigns. What what does your stuff look like? Have have you paid attention to it? Um, is this something that that you're working on on a regular basis, or or or, or does it matter? Yeah, no, that's fantastic, Ever. You really know how to get into that and really ask. Because yeah, as a branding company, um, you you have to make sure that you're branding well yourself. And so this process that we send people through, we've had to go through that same process ourselves. Ask the same questions. What is our archetype? In fact. Last year, when we first launched, we branded ourselves wrong. It was more of this jester personality, a little more on the creative side. And we're going, you know what? I don't think that's us. I mm-hmm. think we're more of the magician brand of making magic happen. So we actually rebranded in May a whole new look and feel of the website to direct to our clients. So when they see us, what we're trying to do is make sure when they see us that the people that are our target markets – look at us, they recognize us and go, I am looking for that look, that image, that feel, that's who I am. And that's, that's in everything we do. We make those decisions. So you're still a, a young company. What, what was that rebranding like, uh, you know, obviously early on and, and what did your clients think? Yeah, it was good. Um, <laughs> we, uh, it was very clear once our uh, we started launching our product in there. I still have clients call back and ask if they could have like that old pricing we used to have, <laughs> etc. Uh-huh. We've had to kind of lift to another entrepreneur level, like this, because when people are done with us, they get like this thirty-five page book, uh, brand standards book that has thirty-five images in it with mood boards and texture, the voice of their company, how to live their brand, what an email would look like, their logo, how to use it, how not to use it. It's this gorgeous booklet that they get. Back then, we were catering to super intro businesses. Like mm-hmm. they were still having full-time jobs, barely starting their business. And that just doesn't exist anymore. So we had to elevate the whole image of the company to this a little bit more executive, a little bit more professional, someone that knows where they're going. So if you go to the website, you'll see those images throughout it is this a little bit more finesse you've worked with several large companies right and then uh, and smaller companies as well and solopreneurs um is it i'm assuming and you tell me if if i'm wrong is it harder to work with the entrepreneur you know the solopreneur because they're so passionate about it it's it's them as opposed to a larger company where it's it's not as um you know, it's not the the CEO's identity for the most part, but a lot of solopreneurs, it, it, it is, right? Right now, I feel like outlier, I am outlier, right? So making changes mm-hmm. and tweaks and things like that, it it would be a little bit more difficult for me as opposed to the CEO of a company with a, a thousand employees or something like that. What, what's What's been your, um, your experience there? Yeah, I... Personally, I really enjoy, our brand strategists enjoy working with the smaller businesses because of that ability for them to be able to move on a dime. Corporations, a little bit tougher. Maybe their brands have already been created, a little more bureaucracy, a lot of people to get their okay on. And there's places for that that have big teams that can come in and do that. Mm-hmm. For us, it's really great because, yeah, we do run into the, the a business owner that is like, these are my favorite colors and this is who I love and this is that. And, and with a little bit of education to the brand strategy portion, we say, um, if you're a lawyer, let's say this is an example and they go, well, but I love pinks and yellows and I love being funny and silly. You're saying, okay, you're in that business and you're building it, but that is the wrong direction. It doesn't matter what you like. It matters what your target market, sure. what they see, what they're looking for. Like the the CEO of Nike, if he's ever let go and a new one comes in, believe me, who cares what the you know the CEO of Nike's favorite color is? Yeah. Or 
his favorite style of photography. It doesn't matter at that the point, brand yeah. yeah being created. So at the front end with an entrepreneur like this, like a young entrepreneur, it is fun because you can be very creative. You can build something from scratch. And uh, just with a little bit of education, you can get past that. This is my favorite color. You, and I should say real quick that when you do go through stuff and things get approved, like a logo and the looks, there's three things it always has to do. Number one is it has to be on strategy to the brand brief, has to be on target to your market. And the third one ever is me likey. <laughs> like you have to like it. There is that part where they do have to like it at the end. And so when people put their like logos on Facebook or what do you think of this? That's cool, but they're they're only finding out who likes it. Yeah. They're not no those people don't know strategy and target. So you'll get one third of the picture if you do it that way. But yeah. Anyways. <laughs> as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, uh, what are some of the challenges that you have uh, personally right now when it comes to running your own business? That, you know, for, forget, um, forget about the clients right now. Running yeah. this business with employees and taxes and all that good stuff. Uh, what's the most challenging part for you? Oh, wow. I'll give you two. The, yeah. the one for me, because I'm a visionary creative, is having too many ideas and not having the funds to be able to do it. Oh, interesting. Especially being from like my corporate background and knowing the commercials and the vision and the marketing you could do and the events, but you have to kind of say, okay, maybe that's for next year's budget or the year after that. That's a big one. And the and the other challenge is is you're always you're always challenged, I think, with sales. When sales is good, life is good. When sales are bad, life's terrible. Huh. I think Apple went through that same thing. And so we we just recently went through a bottleneck because we got a, a ton of leads coming in, massive calls from our sales team, but the conversion rates are very low. And so we actually what, and this is kind of nice about having a smaller company is because you can go back to the problem really quickly and change the course of the boat fast. So we rewrote our sales process, our scripts, uh, set up the first call in a specific way, moving in the conversion in the third to the second call. And we just recently did that, like as of like this week, because we saw a huge bottleneck. But that was a big challenge for us. Yeah, you know, I love that you're uh, able to move quickly when it comes to stuff like that, right? Like you're saying, some of these larger companies, it's e even though they know that they should, it's still hard to kind of steer that that huge ship around, right? Yeah, yeah, because you have to change a lot of habits and a lot of people, and it's sometimes a little tougher. <laughs> Okay, so other than you know maybe the 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 branding part of it, the the that creative part of it uh, that you do right now with 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 the job that you do, what are you personally the best at right now? I am the best. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. This answer is gonna it blew everyone away. But I am really good at speaking in front of people live. Really. Like, Get me in front. Like, so I have someone now finding events all over the country for me to speak at because when I get in front of an audience, I love my passion comes out of these because my whole goal is to help businesses understand this branding and how it can help them streamline it, save time, save money everywhere. If you just have this compass. And so when I get up there, I have fun activities. I can relate to them. And I, at the end, I'm like, this, that was really fun. Like even talking with you ever, I'm like, this is really fun to do for me. I had no idea that was in me. <laughs> so that's you know what I uh, now that you mentioned, I can see that right. I, I that wouldn't have been one of the things that uh, that I would have um, thought about, but I, I guess now that you bring it up, yes, you, you've been great, and I, I can see you uh, uh, thriving in that for sure. So I'm glad that you're kind of putting a little bit more time and and resources into that. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So, you know, as we start to kind of wind this down a little bit, tell us right now then, for those that are listening, right, the entrepreneurs from all over the world right now, um, we're, we're in the trenches, we're, we're trying to make it happen, we're passionate about whatever we're doing, right? Uh, and I don't care if you're selling um, services or you have a product or whatever it is that you're doing, branding is very, very important. Um, overall advice for all of us that are listening what do we need to be looking for right now? What should we be doing right now? The the thing that's going to elevate us to that next level the the quickest. Yeah, that is 
man, I mean, obviously logistics is like branding. If I could convey my 20 years experience in that world is think about it. Make sure you have a brand brief that guides you in those decisions because the time you spend in business is so important away from your family. Um, the time you spend is, is you want to fine tune that. So if you get a brand, just know that that helps you make decisions on in thousands of directions one way and 11,000 directions that you would not want to have taken that you probably would have taken without a brand brief. So it guides you in that. So that's what I want to say as, as far as logistics, but to the business owner, we were all there at the <laughs> beginning. And like, we were all there. Like I, I just spoke last week and, and these, these new entrepreneurs with these great ideas and there's, you can hear it in their voice and their vibrations of, I, I'm so scared to step into this world and wow, you have done so much and do we are just as scared as you. Okay. Maybe we've done it a little longer, but have faith and keep like consistent. Like there's a, there's a mantra on my board. I say every day, it says that businesses are not made in a day or made or broken in a day, a week, a month, or even a year. Yeah. I am successful. I consistently work my plan. I am in business for the marathon, not the sprint. And I think if you just, if you would say that every time, every day, I've been saying it for a year and a half plus, <laughs> and that has driven me to say, okay, maybe small things will happen today, but look where you'll be at next year. And belief is probably what I would leave with them ever. Dude, that's awesome. I, I, I love it. Thanks for the, uh, the words of advice. Now, last couple of questions. Um, three years from now, when we have you back on the show, what are we going to be talking about? Oh, man. We're going to be talking about <laughs> – we could talk about where we were at today and going, wow, we really <laughs> didn't have anything figured out. <laughs> we, we, we were just starting. Um, yeah, this – my goal is to build a multi-million dollar business. And when I get to that point, I want to show companies that how branding was able to help. And not just my company, but the hundreds and hundreds of companies that we've helped – up to that point, we speak again. I love at least on. We'll yeah. talk to you again, I'm sure, before that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We won't wait three years for that to happen. Yeah, uh, dude, I, I'm glad and, and no doubt that uh, you're certainly well on your way. Um, you know, and so for those that are listening that, that want to uh, get to know you a little bit more, the company a little bit more, or just want to engage with you online, uh, where can we find you? Yeah, absolutely. the na The company's name is Right Think. The website is Right hyphen think r-i-g-h-t hyphen think t-h-i-n-k and i just i love it we, we know branding inside and out and we love doing it and i just say that's where the rubber hits the road see our portfolio page go just go look at the, the logos the images that we've done and just see our work but know that that work has stemmed from a brand brief that guided us to do it Cool. So Outliers, you can go to outliermagazine.co. That's outliermagazine.co. First of all, subscribe to our podcast, rate, review it, share it with friends. Uh, but there you're going to see Brian's, uh, we're going to have links to his website, social media accounts. Feel free to reach out to him. Uh, obviously, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's a great guy. He will respond uh, and, and connect with him. Uh, this, is, this has been a lot of fun, Brian. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us for sharing your words of wisdom and for just doing what you're doing and, uh, you know, coming down and, and actually supporting us uh, at some of our events as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. It's been fabulous. I appreciate you being, being here with your, with your show. Yeah, this was a lot of fun and uh, outliers. We'll talk to you tomorrow.